So is your organisation pro or anti? Uh, it's, well, it's a, it's a news band, it's independent, we don't hold a view. Oh, you personally though? What view uh, do you hold? Why is that important? Oh, because it'd be interesting to see, you know, how, how the footage is used, you know, because obviously, well, obviously if you're for same-sex marriage, you know... I'm very nervous about it. Oh, no, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm not, uh, obviously I don't, I don't do many media interviews. Yeah, But, okay. you know, obviously you don't have to, you don't have to... Well, you um, don't have to justify myself as a journalist either, do I? I mean... I don't think, I don't think you have to be, I don't think you have to be very, um... You know, you don't have to look very far. I'm just saying, you don't have to look very far to, to realise that the media obviously has, you know, obviously everybody has a bias. Right. You know, Everyone's so any, got a political any, opinion. Of course, well, yeah. Well, Everybody's got a philosophy yeah, yeah, that, they, that they live by. Yeah. So, so, obviously you personally have a philosophy as well, so it just yeah, depends well, on I how... Have to, well, I don't have to, but I'm going to vote, that's for sure. Yeah, but well, what are you going to vote? Are you going to vote, well, vote yes or yes. no? Yeah. I'll vote yes. So, why, why are you voting yes? Because uh, it's important to me, because I've got uh, family and friends that... Uh, yeah. So tell me what you're doing. So if here. something's just important to somebody, then that. Sorry. If something's just important to somebody, that's a reason to change the laws in our nation. Is that? Yeah. Your, your, sort of your so, argument. Yeah, that's usually what happens. But that same argument could be used to support anything, really. I mean, what if, what if, you know, what if polygamy is important to somebody? Should they be allowed to do that? Well, I mean. Because the argument that you know, because somebody wants to do something, therefore it's a basis for why it should be law. I mean, that same argument could be used to support any sort of sexual relationship, right? Uh, not necessarily, not if it's within the confines of what society agrees. Yeah, so if society right, agrees, right, like, you know, is, is, like in an is, Islamic society where they believe polygamy is okay, and you care about these Muslims, right? So wouldn't you want to allow polygamy then? Like, because you care about them, you love them, and you, and you want them to be able to express themselves how they like. Really thought about it from that standpoint, to be honest. Yeah, because there's not really that many arguments that they have to support same-sex marriage. So, yeah, and that's one of them, right? One of them is that you know, love is love. So, but but you know, even you recognise yourself because you're hesitant to promote polygamy. That you recognise not all love is love. What's you know, that the, there, the are, there are against, What are the arguments against it? Well, the arguments against, I mean, one of the main ones is that, um, you know, marriage inherently, I mean, even from the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, it talks about the human right to, to, to found, what is it, to, to marry and to found a family. So, uh, you know, one of the problems is if we normalise, you know, sex outside of marriage, which includes fornication, includes adultery, and it includes homosexuality, right, and, and any sort of sex outside of marriage, what it does to a society is it normalises that sort of culture. And then we see an increase in, uh, you know, uh, single parents. We see an increase in broken families. We see an increase in divorce. And this is ultimately detrimental for society because ideally a child is raised by their biological mother and father um, in a stable relationship. So, um, you know, if you want to have a good country, we need to have good children. And to have good children, you need, uh, uh, what's it? you, need um, you know, parents that are lovingly committed to one another. Um, but when you start applying that to same-sex parenting, you know, they're, they're not actually the parents of the child because same-sex couples can't actually have... I mean, you admit that, right? Like a, like a, a same-sex couple can't have children. Well, they can, just biologically they can't. Yeah, bio together, no, but they can't, they, they can't in and biology. of themselves. Like, yeah, how, does yeah. a, how does a homosexual couple have children? Well, they do it by adoption or they do Yeah, so they take somebody else's child or what's another way they can get children? So, I, well, so they take... I don't, yeah, when you right. adopt, your you... interpretation is that they take someone else's. No, no. Well, when you adopt, you are adopting a child that's not yours, right? Yeah, right. You're, 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 you know, maybe take is not the right word because obviously it could be given to them. Yeah. But they, they are, they, they are fostering a child that is not biologically yeah, theirs. Yeah, yeah. So obviously, you would, you would agree that, that, that orphans and adoption is not an ideal scenario. It's not something that we want well, to promote. It is, for, it is for orphans and yeah, children but, that don't have parents. Yeah, but a child that's not an orphan, I mean, a child being an orphan is not an ideal. Meaning, like no, when you when you put but a child does, into does legal, so does legalizing same-sex marriage encourage children to become orphans? It, no, it, what it does is if you if you argue for same-sex or redefining marriage on the basis of human rights using the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, then that statement in and of itself, uh, in Article 16 of the Universal Declaration, says that they have a right to marry and found a family. So you, I'm fine to disconnect recognizing uh, you know same-sex marriage legally 
and, and the adoption of children. I know that they're separate issues, but if you argue on the basis of human rights, that actually blends the issue because the, the right is to marry and found a family. So either they don't have that human right or they um, it either it doesn't apply to them because they don't have the ability to found a family um, or they have the human right, which is probably what you're arguing. Would you argue that they have the human right to marry? Uh, according to the, they should have the human right to marry. Yeah, according to the Universal Declaration of... of uh, uh, are you familiar with the de Universal uh, no, Declaration I'm, of Human well, Rights? I'm not, I haven't read it recently, no. Yeah, well, let, me, let me just read it. Maybe I can ask a few questions. Yeah, yeah, sure. What are you, what's the purpose of today's rally? Well, I think the purpose of today's rally is just to show people that there, you know, that, uh, that there is support for, for true marriage. That, that there are people out there that are willing to speak out and that people shouldn't be scared to speak out uh, for true marriage and, and speak out against the redefinition of marriage. Because you hear a lot of people using the slogan marriage equality, which is really a misnomer because, you know, marriage equality, everybody has, the, has equal uh, right to marry somebody of the opposite gender. You know, I, I can marry somebody of the opposite gender, you can. I can't marry somebody of the same gender and you can't either. So there is marriage equality. Uh, what they're really pushing for is the redefinition of marriage. They, they want to redefine marriage to include homosexuality. Um, you know, and that's, that's what really what they're aiming for. They're trying to normalise homosexuality in our society. But do you think it's abnormal? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I, I believe homosexuality is, isn't natural. Um, and even, even according to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, it's not natural. Um, I'll just read that for you here because I've got it here in my notes. But uh, in, uh, in Article 16, it says, Men and women of full age without any limitation due to race, nationality or religion. So you'll see that it can be limited by sexual orientation. It's not actually listed in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Did you know that? No, I didn't. But it's so it only, it only says you, can, you can't limit it by race, nationality and religion. So, but the reason why you can limit it by sexual orientation is because they have the right to marry and to found a family. And homosexuals can't found a family without a, a sperm donor or a surrogate mother. So, and it also says in number three, it says the family is the natural and fundamental group unit of society. So when you ask, is homosexual natural? No, according to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, it's not natural because they can't found a family, you know, and, and you even admit that yourself. They can't without the help of a third party. So... I haven't admitted anything, So, what do you think, though, of the argument that there's... That this kind of prejudice is harmful towards gay people, especially like maybe. Well, what do you think of that? Well, no, I, I think the prejudice against you know uh, the views that of true marriage is what's harmful. So you know we can use these labels of prejudice. It's like bigotry. I mean, you know they they call people that support true marriage bigots, but the people that are against it are bigots too because you know we we both are intolerant of the other person's view. So when you say that there's a prejudice against. Uh, I don't know what you call it, like redefining marriage. Well, uh, we would say there's a prejudice against marriage because marriage is defined as one man and one woman. You know, we could equally say they are prejudiced against what is actually the current legal view um, in Australia. So. so there's a moral equilibrium in the debate, do you think, that on both sides of the argument? Um, no, so I, I think, no. Do you think the argument's credible for... Well, I, th I think the question really is where do we get our morals from? Right, because you know, obviously, everybody believes they're doing the right thing. The question is, what are they basing their morals on? So, what do you what do you base your morals on? My family and my friends. How I grew up. Okay. Yeah. So, if your if your family, you know, if they if, if you lived in in a Muslim country and your family thought no, it was okay. Country, so. Yeah, but if you did, because yeah. you, we're testing the consistency of your argument. No, no if, that's what I'm saying. That's where my values come from. Other people yeah. get values from faith. Other people and other, other people, my values come from where I live, not where other people live. Exactly. So let's say that's your standard of morality. Your standards, if your standards come from the, the, your family and, and your own opinion on things, you know, what happens when somebody else's opinion or their family agrees with, you know, abortion, agrees with, you know, polygamy and things like that? You, using your argument, you have no way to argue against that case. So that's what I'm saying. It's, it's not really a way to argue your case of you know, this is, should be an absolute moral standard when it's just based on your own opinions.
because absolute morality has to come from something outside of us. It can't come, you know, if, if absolute morality just comes from you and me, like who am I to impose my morality on you? I'm just another man. So that's why people believe that there is a God that, 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 uh, that dictates morality in the sense because he created the world, he tells us the moral standards. And because he created the world, he has that authority, whereas we don't because we're not God. So. Okay. And do you think that, are you confident that the, the definition of a marriage will not change? Are you confident that a, a no vote will come out of this and that the government will? I don't know, I guess that's why, it'd be, that's why we'd, it'd be nice to have a plebiscite. I mean, I'm not, obviously I'm for just leaving the definition as it is. You know, you know, obviously people are arguing out there that we shouldn't even have to have this plebiscite. And I agree because it should just stay as a man and a woman. But uh, you know, if they're going to keep pushing the envelope and it's already been rejected 17 times through government, um, I believe what's happening is just, you know, let's just settle it then. Why don't we just have a plebiscite and then we don't have to guess whether there's a majority uh, of support or not support. We can see what happens. And I mean, even after this plebiscite, this postal plebiscite, I mean, it's involuntary. It's voluntary. So we won't even have, you know, conclusive, um, you know, it, it's, it's just a survey, right, of whoever wants to participate. And just one last question. Do you think that young gay people that are, that are, that are of faith, do you think they struggle to kind of reconcile their faith with their sexuality and that kind of, and, and this debate hurts that? Of course. I mean, it, I, I think if a, if a young person obviously, you know, is a homosexual, then of course it's going to conflict with their faith if they're trying to adhere to the faith of Christianity because Christianity teaches that homosexuality is sinful. So it would be like somebody trying to adhere to the Christian faith and then denying that Jesus Christ is the saviour. Of course it's going to conflict. You know, so it'd be like it would conflict if I thought that abortion was okay. It's going to conflict with my faith. But not um, everyone of yeah. faith believes that there's that, uh, the teaching of Jesus... Uh, that, well, not, well, there's a lot of people of faith that will vote yes and believe that, uh, that, that, it, that it does but it isn't the teaching, it's the teachings of Jesus. Yeah. It's the teaching of Jesus that they should be welcoming. Well, let me ask you, where do you think we should get the teachings of Jesus mind, from? Do you mind oh, oh well, was, I thought your question was... No, 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 no. I said, uh, but there's a lot, well, I'm saying there's a lot of people that would argue that, that Jesus' teachings are welcoming and they should, uh, the church should encourage, uh, should welcome with open arms people that are gay. And are gay. No, no, in fact, I, I'll read for you... Uh, you, can, you don't have to read anything, you can just tell me whether or not you, whether you disagree with Oh, I just want to show you that it's not my opinion. So this, this is Paul writing in first... This is Paul writing in 1 Corinthians 5. He says, I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators. So for, a fornicator is somebody that uh, engages in sexual activity outside of the bounds of marriage. So that includes, you know, obviously fornication. It includes adultery and includes homosexuality. It includes bestiality as well, like people that have sex with animals. He says, I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators. You're not altogether with the fornicators of this world or with the covetous or extortioners or with idolaters. For then must you need to go out of the world but now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man that, uh, that is called a brother be a fornicator or a covetous or a dilator or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner with such an one know not to eat. For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within, but them that are without God judgeth. Therefore put away from yourselves, put away from among yourselves that wicked person. So this idea that the church is just welcoming everybody, I mean, that's not something that we actually learn from the Bible, because the Bible says that certain sins are not welcome at church unless they are repented of, right? It's because, yeah, so um, I don't know where you're getting, where do you get your idea of Christianity from? Is it just from what people are saying or are you actually yeah, getting it from the Bible? People, yeah. yeah, but see, that's the problem. It's kind of like a, your own view on where you get morality I and mean, it just comes from people's own opinions. Right then, you know, it's a jungle out there. But Christ Christianity is meant to be based on the words of Scripture, right, and the words of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ said very clearly in Matthew 19, have you not read he, that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. 
So, yeah. So when you ask about, you know, why there are Christians that support same-sex marriage, well, it's, you know, Jesus said, why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say. There are a lot of people that go by the name Christian, but they're not actually following the teachers, teachings of Jesus Christ. Yeah. All right, cool, man. That's all I need. Okay. Thanks, dude. All right, well, thanks. Hopefully you vote no. Hey? Hopefully you change your mind and vote no. <laughs>